If you haven't yet seen part 1, click the tag in the top right and check that out first. Hey world, this is going to be quite a short video as I recently spent a month back in my home country of Malaysia. It's the first time being back after spending about 3 years in the States. Being back was wild. It reminded me immediately of all the tiny aspects of my culture that I had nearly forgotten. It had me desperately trying to find my role and place within my family. And now seeing life through the lens of an adult, it proved to me how different life was all around the world. More importantly though, it allowed me to re-experience all of the Malaysian food that I missed dearly while I was here. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. In the last episode, we did the very preliminary steps to predict prices with a small amount of data. Today, we go over how and why we acquired much, much more. My first step was to immediately take to Google and search for the public APIs to pull from just like last time. I searched all the way to the deep dark second page of Google search only to find three options. The first was OS Buddy's API. Seemed good but pointed to a bunch of dead links. Next was RS Buddy's API. Once again, seemed perfect. All I needed to do was call one endpoint for historical graph data and I'd have more than enough to move forward. But alas, it wasn't meant to be. All I could find from it was the summary page, which still was better than what we had previously, as this had the number of items bought and sold, the buying price and the selling price. Much better features to run through our models. However, the issue would be us having to grab from this API and save it consistently and constantly. We'd have to look back at it every 15 minutes and save. Well, not what we want and it would take a while, right? So the last thing was GE Tracker's API, uh, which had been suggested to me by several people including Joe Deschmo and my lovely Discord peeps. However, looking into it, I couldn't find the API keys and there were rumors alluding to having to subscribe to a membership on their website before being able to do so, which was paid. So, did not do that. I also did this all in my early days in Malaysia and I didn't have much time to do so. So I settled on RS Buddy's API and began hacking. Similar to what we had last time, I wrote a Python program to help me fetch data from the public API and save it to a CSV file. The difference here is that we firstly use a different link to grab the RS Buddy summary API. Then we have multiple arrays this time to save all the different useful features from that summary and that time. Then we have a simple function to create a CSV and initialize a CSV with labels along with the first entry. We have another useful function right after that to append to the files that we just had created. Now we have a couple of functions to grab the data. The first is when we initializing the new CSV file, we declare a timestamp that we'll use for every CSV in that current time. Similar to last time, we add all the labels to an array and as well as the values for each of the items uh, and their particular feature, for example, by average or so on. Then we use the write to CSV function to initialize and write the associated features uh, to their associated CSV files at that timestamp. The append data function is exactly the same, just without the labels and with the function to append to CSV instead of creating a new one. Data will come from the API in this manner. For each item, we get information like the item ID, the item name, but also the buy average, the buy quantity, the sell average, and so on. Then it gets added to our CSV like this with all the items and their associated values at that timestamp. Notice that we have five other CSVs with different values at the side based on their features. Next, I set up a Windows task scheduler uh, task to run the program every 15 minutes. It's a useful app that comes with Windows which allows you to set things like trigger points or how often you want something to happen. The action, which is what you want to happen, here I set um, it to run Python uh, with the scraper that I had made and other useful features like if you want a computer to wake up when running the tests and so on. Beyond this point, I didn't touch my computer all while in Malaysia. It sat at home under some rubble, quietly doing its job for the entire month or so. I tried other cloud-based options so I wouldn't have to leave my computer on 24-7 but it didn't really allow outside API calls without having a subscription either or having it add it to the whitelist which required proper documentation by RS Buddy's API for example. This is one I might really consider if we have to collect more data in the future. But for now, this is enough, so let's get to testing.
Once again, we're sticking with the same notebook we had last time. One immediate difference is that I'm using the timestamp as the index of the pandas data frame, which I should have done last time to be honest. Then I'm dropping the duplicates from the data frame, and as you can see, there are a lot of repeated rows. Because the API only tends to update every 45 minutes to an hour, hence grabbing the data every 5 to 15 minutes causes a lot of repeats. I keep the first row that is unrepeated, and as you can see, we go down from over 3,000 entries to just over 1,000. Now, not much else has changed from the base notebook. We now use more examples for training since we have more data, and we look further back into the past. We also use the same baseline model that is what we're aiming to, at the very least, beat. Finally, we changed the batch buffer size a little, which we'll go through further when hyperparameter tuning. After some training, it looks like our results for prediction one step into the future are amazing. Looking at our results for using multivariate data, there's one that's a little bit off, but other than that, it looks much better than our previous session's results. More importantly, we look towards the multi-step output, and this looks much more promising. It seems like it's able to better determine the patterns in the future. However, it's still definitely not perfect. But there is one thing that I wanted to look out for, which was the randomness that affected each model's performance. Here I tested it with different, a uh, few different seeds, and this is the output. Firstly, for univariate data, then multivariate single step data, and finally some multivariate multi step data. In all, it seems fairly similar, and I'm pretty pleased with the results so far. Definitely more things we can do with acquiring data in the future. Data augmentation, paying for different APIs, web scraping from graphs that go back even five years. But I'm happy right now with the amount of data that we have, and we'll go back to that in the near future. But more importantly, our focus right now will be to improve the accuracy of our model and get better results. Something that was highly suggested by a few experts in the comments, experts in econs, finance, and OSRS, was feature engineering, like adding things adding features like time of day or using these new features that we recently acquired like uh, how much is being bought as sold at this particular time. So that will definitely be the next video. We will explore how to acquire and use different features to produce better results. There's also a lot of other things we can do like hyperparameter tuning, using different models entirely and much more that we will explore in videos to come. I'd like to announce that I'll try my best not to pull this knowledge right out of my bottom and instead I'll be following along the knowledge that I'm acquiring by reading this book on time series analysis and prediction. A lot of these books are very heavily mathematical and this one so far has been very easy going and practical with Python. I, if you'd like to join me on my journey, you can check out the book in the description below. I promise I'll finish chapter 8 by the next video which is about 270 pages in. Either way, I will cover what I learned there in a simple way, hopefully, through this grand exchange example, and everyone watching should be able to learn something new about predicting the future. Please let me know down below if you have any comments and suggestions. I take everything into consideration. Please don't forget to subscribe and join the Discord channel if you ever want to talk. Alright, bye now!